In this video, we're going to do a couple of examples with optical path length calculations, but this time involving phase shifts. So remember that optical path length is just the distance that light thinks it travels because light changes its wavelength. It, its wavelength goes down in higher index materials. And so light thinks that it travels further when it's traveling through a high index material. And we can calculate this distance that light thinks that it travels by taking the integral of n times dl. And usually the refractive index is constant, and so that will give us n times l, where n is our refractive index, and l is the distance that the light had traveled. And there's some, so n is our refractive index of the surrounding medium. Now a phase shift is, often this happens when light gets reflected, but basically it means if my light is traveling and it hits an interface, a phase shift will result in all of a sudden there being an instantaneous half wavelength added to the wave. It'll become negative. So if it was initially down here at minus one or the electric field was negative, then it gets flipped. So now the electric field is positive and then it continues on its merry way. Now phase shifts don't have to be just a half wavelength. They can be a smaller amount or a larger amount. Typically they are going to be a half wavelength because this is equivalent to a negative sign. So this is equivalent to multiplying by negative one. And the, neg the, the number negative one turns out to be pretty common when you deal with optical reflection and transmission. So let's do an example. And in this example, we're gonna compute the optical path length from point A to point B after light travels to an interface and then back from an interface. And it picks up because this first material that we're in has a higher refractive index than the second material, we're going to pick up a phase shift of lambda over two. So how do we calculate the optical path length? Well, in this case, I see two separate distances that we're traveling. So we're traveling from A to the interface, and then we're traveling back from the interface to point B. So our optical path length is gonna be definitely the sum of those. So the optical path length from A to my interface, let's call it I, plus the optical path length from my interface back to point B. And now because it's reflecting off of this surface and this index is lower than this one, then I have an extra lambda over two that I need to add to the optical path length. Now I should add, there's other ways to get this phase shift. So n, this refractive index doesn't have to be bigger than this one. Uh, and once you learn about the Fresnel equations, you'll learn um, Fresnel is spelled, just so you can look it up, spelled like Fresnel, unfortunately. Darn French. Uh, but Now, I should add that there are other ways to get this phase shift. So N, the first refractive index, doesn't have to be bigger than the second one. And this is dictated by the what are called the Fresnel equations, which you'll learn a little later in your electromagnetics career. And unfortunately, because the guy was French, it's spelled Fresnel. Or I guess you could say unfortunately because I'm American, I just read it wrong. Now this first optical path length from point A to the interface, well, this is just the distance times the refractive index because it's the refractive index is constant over that length. So it's the distance times the refractive index, which is here just two, so 2D. And then we need to add the distance from, or the optical path length from the interface back to point B. So that itself is just D times two. So same as before, D times two. Let's keep that in blue. And then finally we add our lambda over two. Now this lambda, I'll draw, I'll write it as lambda naught. This is the wavelength in free space. Now. You might say, well, aren't we in a n equals two medium? Why is this the wavelength of free space? The underlying reason is that the electric field gets multiplied by negative one. And the way that you do this is you add lambda naught over two to the optical path length. The light thinks that it's moved forward another half wavelength. 
So my overall optical path length is just 4D plus lambda naught over two. This is my total optical path length. And this is very similar to what we had without phase shift. So we, we pick up the same distance that we would expect. There's just also a lambda naught over two here. So that was one example. Let's do another one. Let's say that our light starts out at point A and then it travels a distance D down to this slab of material with refractive index of two. And then it goes through the slab, bounces back off the backside, goes back through and then back up. And we want to calculate the total optical path length. Optical path length is equal to what? Well, it looks like we've got four separate things going on here plus our phase shift at the at the end if we like or in the middle i guess so we can do this one at a time first the optical path length of this first little segment is the distance from a to this interface which i've just drawn as d so the distance is d and the refractive index is one so that's the first optical path length and then when we go through the slab of material, remember that when we transmit through a material, there's no phase shift that we have to worry about. So we only care about the distance from this interface to the bottom interface, which the distance is still D, like it was before, we can see on the left. And now the refractive index is two, so the optical path length is twice what it was before. Now, once it reflects off of this back interface, because we're going from a high index to a low index, and we're at normal incidence, in other words, we're hitting the thing straight on, then we also pick up a lambda naught over two. This is the phase shift that we get at this interface. Finally, we need to go back from the bottom interface to the top interface. So that's a distance D and our refractive index is two and we need to go from the top interface back to point B. So that's another distance D, and the refractive index is one. And if we add up all these things together, we'll get that this is, what, uh, two plus two plus one plus one, that's six D. So we got six D, and then plus lambda naught over two. This is our total optical path length. And so you can see computing optical path lengths with phase shifts is basically the same as doing it without them. You just need to know when exactly you're picking up a phase shift. And usually you'll have one when you go from a high index material to a low index material. But again, that's only usually. It depends on the whether what angle your light is also at and this is dictated by the Fresnel equations these will always tell you what your phase shift is going to be finally i'd like to thank all my patrons on patreon your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible if you aren't currently a patron to get early video access behind the scenes footage exclusive content and join a like-minded community click the link on screen or in the description below thanks for watching